It's parenting the Roseanne way. Well, people parent differently than they did in your day. Turns out a lot of what you did did not work, and some of it was against the law. (laughs) Kids don't need slack. They need boundaries. The happiest kids are raised in cages. Now, child and family therapist Adam Russo is the author of Unwritten Rules, Real Strategies to Parent Your Child into a Successful Adult. And Adam, obviously, she didn't mean put kids in cages, but there is a big debate in this country over parenting and what is the most effective way to parent. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right. So does she does she have a point at least about the boundaries part of it? Well, on the boundaries part, I think she's 100 percent right. As far as adulthood goes, our goal as parents is to prepare kids for adulthood. And it's impossible for kids to learn how to be an adult without boundaries. There's limits to everything. You have to show up to work on time. You have to get dressed right. There's tons of different rules. And we have to teach those rules to kids when they're young so that they can apply them when they're older. So the boundaries piece is right. You're, but the, you know, the, the extent to which is where the lines get crossed. Well, and and again, I mean, it's you know, there's a certain amount of joking in in that. I don't I don't think Roseanne really believes that kids should be put in cages. Do you? Sure. No, 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 not at all. So, not at all. It's, so at all. you know, and here's the thing. You know, we complain a lot about uh, about kids that get participation trophies and who don't seem to know that sometimes you're going to lose and sometimes bad things are going to happen to you. It's like parents have, have helicoptered them into a protective bubble. And this appears to have been really detrimental. It, you're absolutely correct. I, you know, we, we do this thing where we, we don't want our kids to feel hurt. We don't want them to cry. We don't want them to get upset. And so we protect them all throughout their young lives. Then all of a sudden they graduate high school. And then we expect as parents to now be looking at a functional adult. But we just spent the past 18 years protecting them from the experiences that will allow them to be a uh, a functional adult. And that's why the whole the whole system breaks down and why the whole idea of protecting and the helicopter uh, philosophies don't work because kids don't have the opportunity to practice failure so that they can then apply uh, what they learn through experience into adulthood. Instead, they have to fail as adults where the consequences are much more catastrophic. And what's interesting is you're also seeing a kind of a backlash against the helicopter parenting with something called free range parenting, which is how I grew up and most people who are my age grew up, which was during the summer, your mom said, get out of the house, (laughs) come back when the sun goes down. I don't want you in my hair. (laughs) <laughs> yes, yes. And, and you know, and that's, I mean, there was at least, you know, first of all, it's kind of crazy to think, I mean, we have to have a law that says parents can let kids kind of do their own thing. I mean, you know, there's some common sense that has to go along with this. We can't regulate parenting across the board. There's too many scenarios. And common sense should just, you know, be the dictator here, because you're going to have some, you know, 10, 12 year olds who are very independent and very functional, and some 10, 12 year olds who are going to need a little extra help. And then it's the responsibility of the parent to decide, you know, how, how much in, to, to push them and, um, and try to give them a little bit more, more rope to see how far they can go. And as parents, it's up, you know, it's up to us to decide how that works. But instead, you know, parents tend to do one of two things. Either they, you know, put, throw their hands up in the air, say, I'm totally powerless, I'm totally helpless, I can't do anything, you know, kids do what you want and I'll protect you from whatever comes. Or they get so over-involved and try to manage every aspect of a kid's life that the kid has no life. And there's a middle ground in there somewhere that parents have to be able to find. It's got to be difficult, too, because, you know, you also have you have this sort of the out of control teenagers and and they are out there and we've seen it. We had a mother who was just arrested after she uh, was trying to get her teenager up for church and apparently brought a stun gun into his yeah. bedroom. <laughs> now, she says she didn't stun the kid. She said she just, you know, sort of rattled it off and said, get out of bed. But she was arrested. I mean, what do, what is a parent supposed to do when they cannot get their kid to do the things that they have to do? Well, and that's and that's the what happens with the show, right, with Roseanne, right? I mean, it's this idea that parents, I think, really do want to do the right things by their kids, um, but they also feel so helpless and powerless sometimes that they don't know what to do. And so, on the one hand, I think it's for parents to to recognize kind of that helplessness and powerlessness that they feel. But on the other hand, um, you know, there's this element of there's a working with your kids and not uh, having an adversarial relationship. When parents can have an open communication and just work with their kids, understand that they are, they are setting the rules. They are setting the boundaries. Parents are in charge. But it can be a dialogue. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, some kind of fascist regime that happens at home where, where parents have to go in and, you know, tase their kids to get them out of bed. That, that, that breaks down communication, and all that's going to do is exacerbate the negative problems. When we can communicate openly, set the rules, set the expectations, and then be consistent with follow-through, 
we have an opportunity to uh, to create a situation that's much more viable for the kids. That's that's so cool. Thank you so much, Adam. I appreciate it, and I wish we had more time. Child and family therapist Adam Russo, the author of Unwritten Rules, Real Strategies to Parent Your Child into a Successful Adult. I remember my dad had uh, a little saying for me every time I didn't want to do something when I was a kid. He just looked at me and said, it's good to be king. So I guess I grew up in a fascist regime. <laughs>